Hello there, I'm Ali Gohar Mahesar, an English teacher and a motivational speaker and you are watching my YouTube channel Learn English with Ali Gohar Mahesar. Guys, today we are going to discuss very unusual topic in English. Uh, guys, you might have heard about the strong uh, like people and weak people, uh, strong nations and weak nations, or uh, strong uh, anything is strong versus weak. Uh, all these things in reality they exist and therefore th some of the things they possess more power and therefore they are called as strong things and those things which do not have any power they are termed as weaker nations or weaker things or weaker people. Uh, same is case with our today's topic. Guys, today's topic is strong verbs and weak verbs. Now, although it seems to be very interesting because uh, we, we always have been listening from different sources, from different people. There are, there are stronger nations and it's weaker nations. There are strong people and it's uh, weaker people. And there are strong leaders and weak leaders in the world. But in English grammar, there's a topic named as strong verbs versus weak verbs. Do you know what are the strong verbs and what are the weak verbs? Okay, if you really don't know, it doesn't matter because I'm going to give you a very simple and easiest way to, to make you understand that what is a strong verb and what is weak verb. So let's get started with our topic. Uh, guys, strong uh, verbs are those verbs which, are, which do not allow uh, some uh, letters to be attached after them in order to make their past and past participle form. That is the second and third form. So therefore they are very strong because they do not give uh, any accommodation, any place to other, uh, uh, other uh, letters to be attached with them and make certain meaning, uh, change their form. For example, uh, the first word is sit. Sit uh, does not allow ed to be attached after it and to change in order to change its form. Therefore, sit changes by changing its internal uh, like vowel letter in order to make its second and third form. Example is sit, set, set. Sit, set, set. So this is how all those verbs which do not allow ed to be attached after them in order to change their second and third form, they are known as stronger verbs or strong verbs on the contrary on the other hand there are certain other verbs which are known as weak verbs now all those verbs which allow ed which allow it to be attached after them and in order to change their second and third form in order to change their past and past participle form they are known as weak verbs in English grammar and the examples of this type of na verbs are walk, walked, walked, love, loved, laughed, pant, panted, panted, etc. These are the examples which tell us, which show us that the words walk, laugh, and paint. They have allowed a place after them to ed in order to make their second and third form. So therefore they are the weak verbs because they are not powerful. They cannot resist the uh, addition of ed after them and therefore they are weak. And those verbs which resist the ad addition of ed after them, they are known as strong verbs. Guys, let me tell you here a very interesting fact as well. The stronger verbs are known as irregular verbs and the weak verbs are known as regular verbs. Now, what is regular and what is irregular verbs? Regular verbs are those verbs which form their past tense and past participle by adding ed after them. All those verbs 
which allow ED to be attached after them to, in order to make their change their form from first to second and third, they are known as regular verbs because they regularly convert their second and third form by adding ED after them. Therefore, they are known as regular verbs. And the examples of regular verbs are play, played, played. Talk, talked, talked. Connect, connected, connected. ATC. Now let's switch to the other topic that is the, the, the irregular verbs. Irregular verbs are those verbs which do not allow ED to be attached of the dam in order to change their second and third form. And uh, these verbs are, remember, these verbs are the same verbs which we just discussed, uh, just earlier we discussed, they are known as stronger verbs because they do not allow ED to be attached of them and therefore they are uh, strong verbs and uh, in other words, they are known as irregular verbs. Why they are known as irregular verbs? Because they usually uh, change their internal structure. They change their uh, vowel letters in order to make their third, second and third form and therefore they are known as irregular verbs. And the uh, irregular verbs are like sit, set, set, ring, ring, rung, come, came, come, cut, cut, cut. These are the examples of the irregular verbs. Now let's move ahead. We distinguish there. There are three types of irregular verbs. There are three types of irregular verbs. Number one, the verbs in which all three forms are the same. That is cat, cat, cat. That is put, put, put. And there are number two, the second type of verbs in which there are two of the three forms are the same. The verbs in which two of the three forms are the same, that is uh, sit, set, set. So the last two forms, that is second and third form, they remain same. Therefore, they are, uh, the, this is known as a second type of the irregular verbs. And the third type of irregular verbs are those verbs in which all three forms are different. For example, ring, ring, rung. All these three forms are different. The first form is ring, the second is ring, and the third one is rung. Uh, another example is sing, sang, sung. So these are different types of the irregular verbs. Below is a list of the irregular verbs divided into three types mentioned above. Some of them can also be regular. In such cases, the regular forms are also given. Type number one, all three forms are the same. Those verbs which, whose all three forms are the same. Here's a list of those verbs. Number two, the list of those verbs whose two of the forms are the same. And here's a list of those verbs as well. And number three, the third type of the verbs are the same, are those whose all three forms are different. And here's a list attached of all those verbs which have got uh, all these three different forms.
so guys i hope you enjoyed our today's topic and uh, if you liked our today's topic then don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel for more videos and in order to improve your english don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel uh, we'll meet again with another video clip till then goodbye have a nice day